Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of our podcast, Beneath Your Skin. This is Gaia, officially crazy. Hello, my dear. How are you doing? I'm okay. I've had to face the real world and the going back to work, which is interesting. But yeah, <laughs> it's weird leaving the house after all this time. <laughs> true, true. I have missed you so much, my dear. Today, yeah. we are going to talk about a movie called Third Eye. I have to admit, uh, is not as good as the original. So that's something this Indonesian franchise uh, has in common with American franchises. The sequel is never as good as the pre- as the original one, but it still had some nice points. Uh, I think the actors were still very good. This time, the plot had some holes and some things that you can't honestly explain. And you can't even blame them to the supernatural. We don't want to talk about the last scene with the ghost child. (laughs) That is terrible. Because at the end, not the end of the movie, but at the end of her... uh, arc of narration she is dragged into hell oh god by some demons <laughs> crawling crawling out of a red hole in the ground oh i kind of lost it by then by that point i was like oh dear oh dear movie oh dear <laughs> yeah yeah that was terrible that was honestly terrible And also, oh, please, come on. How many times can a possessed girl to kill people without paying for her crimes? Because I don't think Indonesian police is going to accept the excuse it wasn't her, she was possessed, because honestly, only MCU can accept uh, this kind of explanation when we have Bucky Barnes being brainwashed for 70 years and Steve Rogers claiming, hey, it's not his fault. Okay, but he still deserves a trial. <laughs> at least for at least to clean his name, Rogers. He needs a trial to clean his name. It's not just because he's your best friend that he's automatically innocent, for fuck's sake. So, yeah, uh, how many times can a girl kill people without being trialed for her crimes? The answer is a lot, (laughs) frankly, because even this time, Alia is possessed and she kills someone. And (laughs) this time, unlike in the original... Too many special effects were used. And uh, the movie is not uh, as uh, creepy and good as the first one. I still don't understand one thing. Hopefully, uh, Zoe will be (laughs) able to give me an answer. So, basically, at the beginning of the movie, Abel dies. Only for the plot to require... Another character that basically is another Abel. So did you kill Abel to bring on Nadia when uh, the same plot line could have been explained with Abel being still alive? So you kill a character to create another character that is basically the same. Why? (laughs) I really don't. I don't get this. My From a- only idea is I decided that the only logical explanation is the actress that played um, the sister, Abel, wasn't able to do the full shoot. They only had her for like a day of filming. She obviously had something else to do. So they had to work out a way to kill off her character and bring someone identical in because she wasn't around to shoot it. Because otherwise, it's stupid. Yeah, it is. Because even if you have one actress for just one day of shooting, it's not that hard to create a plot line that requires another character. You didn't need to have a copycat. 
yeah. in the movie. So no, 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 really. It's uh, that that was something that rubbed me the wrong way since the beginning. Also, I was glad that Abu Windu was back yes. because she is one of my favorite characters of the whole franchise. But uh, uh, Nadia, the new girl, who is basically another Abel, at the at the end, uh, she was used in the same way uh, Alia's boyfriend was used in the first movie. So you need a spirit going in the spirit realm before its time needs another spirit to hide behind it. Otherwise, it can be recognized and it could be impossible for this spirit to find uh, the way back. Okay, but you basically, you told me the same story twice. You change one character without changing it in truth, and then you used it like you already used another character in the first movie. And that gets old. Honestly, it gets old. Uh, so, um, Gaia. so I really... <laughs> I did not enjoy this film. <laughs> for example, for once, we see a man with this gift. The third eye open and uh, basically uh, with the power to stop spirits from uh, haunting him. So he could lock the child's spirit into a room because he knew how to do it. And he kept the mother uh, outside the house because he created a fence around the house. That show you a very powerful person and uh, a different point of view. No, in the end, it was the usual cheating bastard who killed his mistress and child because he didn't want to lose his wife. My question is, if you didn't want to lose your wife or to make her suffer or to hurt her, why the hell did you sleep with her sister? <laughs> yeah. And uh, the sister, the sister figure, why the hell did you sleep with your sister's husband? Okay, now, um, when it became just the same old, old story of a man cheating and killing people to hide is uh, true nature, well, it has nothing to do with supernatural and all to do with uh, <laughs> men being pigs. Yeah. So, no, no, why? Why? They could have use this man with the third eye open in very different ways. It would have been a lot more interesting if he actually turned into some uh, very dark man able to control spirits, able to trap them for his own gaining, not yeah. to hide that he cheated on his wife. Because I have news is not the first man doing it and he won't be the last so mm, no 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 and uh, i have to admit uh the makeup yeah. for the child yeah. no no it doesn't make any sense it it looked like she had a very ugly rubber mask on yeah. her face it had nothing of the amazing makeup that we saw in the first movie. This this film is a massive culprit of the sequel Cash Cow. It's just a, it's a you know, cash grab sequel. It's a cash grab sequel and it also has major sequelitis as well. And if you combine sequelitis with cash grab sequel, this is the kind of rubbish you get. Like, obviously like they killed Abel in the first five minutes of the movie. So I was already like, oh, because the last one ended and I thought it was going a little bit like Winchester. It was going to be about the sisters going off and solving ghost cases and helping spirit move on and helping people who are being haunted understand where they were getting haunted. 
really excited. And then suddenly it was like, no, Abel's dead. It's been some years later. And Alia is now a social worker. And I'm like, huh? What? Wait, what, what, that, what? Okay, fine. And she's had some weird, like, premonition dreams about this house because of this magical necklace that came from nowhere. And then, lo and behold, the orphanage that she is going to do some social work in turns out to be the house. And it's an orphanage for just girls, apart from the one man that's the husband. I'm like, okay, what evil, creepy thing is the husband going to do? Because he's the only man in this, and this is clearly, like, girl power 101. Like, how many of these children is he going to have, I don't know, raped or tortured? Or who's he having an affair with? It was the most boring of all the evil man subgenres. It was just like, he couldn't control where he put his dick. The problem is they also make Micah out to be like a victim. But she chose to sleep with him. It was consensual. So it's like, lady, that's your sister's husband. No, I'm not going to have sympathy for you because you are culpable in this affair. You had an affair. And then when you got pregnant, um, you kind of like, you know, you kept it to yourself. And then finally, you know, when the kid's like, you know, seven or eight years old, you're like, I'm going to tell. And I'm like, we shouldn't have had an affair in the first place. But yeah, but it was so like paint by numbers. I could predict every like plot hole. Also, it wouldn't end. It was so long. And I was watching it with my husband and there's the bit when you hear the voices in the wall and they let the thing out. And I'm like, oh, I, they probably shouldn't have let the demon out. And I was like, oh, it's only been 40 minutes and they're already running around, running away from the demon. What are you going to do for another hour and something that's left? And it's like, turns out it's a whole load of stupid is what they do. So at first I was like, OK, OK. You've let the demon out. What is this evil backstory? No, no, it's a poor child that's like, actually just wants the truth of the situation. And I did like the bit of like, every time you saw creepy hands coming over everything, I was like, oh, small creepy hands. If they just showed us small creepy hands and the ghost photos, I liked the ghost photos. I'm like, that ghost is getting closer. Go. And no one ran in the right direction. Creepy thing would happen. And they always kept going towards it. You, you think there's a dead girl under your bed. You don't climb on the top bunk. You run out the room. Something under your bed steals your shoes. I couldn't help laughing at it. I've stolen your shoes now. Scariest horror moment ever. It literally comes, arms come out the under the bed, steal her slippers and pull them back. So she goes, oh no, there's something under my bed. Run out the room. Don't get in the bed. Don't, don't do no. it. <laughs> no, not only that. Creepy hands steals your shoes and you end up under the bed really yep. really <laughs> it's no, like, no, it's like no, no. people self-preservation do you have no self-preservation in this movie and which none of them did so it kind of started going from creepy to more and more amusing as the movie went on. At first, it was just some creepy arms, some creepy ghosts in the photos, in the backgrounds, haunting the children. Then by the time it stole her shoes, I was like, this is not creepy. And then you see her and the makeup is terrible on the little girl. It's all like paper mache, peely, like, it's like, just give her some dark eyes and make her look a little bit beraggled. And she would have looked creepier than like than what she did and then it was like oh, okay so the truth is going to be the husband had an affair there we go but then we find all that out and there was still 50 minutes of the movie and it's like oh there's another twist and i'm like i bet the husband killed them it wasn't a robber 10 minutes later you found out that twist and then you're like okay and then it does the sequel itis cash cow thing it's like it's a franchise what other things that the first movie did that we have to do in this movie but do it bigger well there's the whole like you know spirit realm wandering going in there to save someone who's been trapped because alia got possessed again it's like woman just get yourself one of those winchester tattoos that stops you getting possessed because i'm sorry you're not going to do much good to anyone if you keep getting possessed every film you're in you are not really screaming hero at me so now it's like you know put upon wife and nadia that have to go in and then firstly they had to semi kill nadia because they needed a good ghost the one bit i did like is when I mean, it looked awful when she's running around the spirit realm trying to find a good ghost to help her. And all the like zombie type ghosts are chasing down in the corridor. And you're like, eh. but the fact that there was a couple climbing along the ceiling, I was like, oh, oh, instead of having a mass of loads of them, 
a couple the couple cre- creeping along the ceiling that was a nice effect I was like, I appreciate the fact that a couple of them are climbing along the ceiling in the walls, but the entire onslaught. And then she finds Nadia and she's like, no, I can't believe you died. Well, she did get very stabbed. And then she was like, oh, I've sent the children away to like keep them safe because I didn't quite realise how many children are in that house. And I was like, OK, she sent the children away. But has an ambulance come to... And then you see Nadia and the children. I'm like, oh, no, she sent all the unnamed children away. But any child that's been named or had a speaking line gets to stay with Nadia. And this ambulance is taking forever to turn up as this girl's bleeding out on the sofa. And it's just like... It's getting more stupid. And then all the scenes in the spirit realm, I'm like, you are literally blowing some weird smoke around an old gym or something. And it's just dudes in robes whipping people. And it's not even like, you can tell they're just kind of going, a splat, a splat. And the little girl's whipping her dad, going, ha ha, I'm going to torture him forever. A purr, a purr. But they put a really like loud smack sound. But you can tell she's just like really haphazardly just like waving her arm a bit. And I'm like, this looks really fake. This isn't as... Because f- I swear in the first one, they were like these weird, creepy concrete tunnels. And by that, and then by the point, I'm like, why were all the ghosts sniffing the walls? Like, in the first one, they were kind of like just being weird and corridors and searing. But this one, they were all like, ooh, I love wall. Mmm, gonna hug a wall. I'm like, why are all the ghosts hugging the walls? But yeah, they were really into wall hugging and pathetic whipping. And then then. Abel comes back from heaven with a bit of like exposition of like, oh yes, things in heaven can come back here, but things here can't go to heaven. Well, I'm glad you went to heaven, but you know, it's like, oh, another twist. She had somehow worked out that, that through a vision that the dad had murdered the family. So she broke into his house, dug up the box of proof and went, hey, Mr. Murderer, I've got proof. So he followed her home and murdered her. And I'm like, oh, this is convoluted and stupid. So, you know, the ghost that killed at the beginning wasn't, didn't kill her. It was the man that... It's like, there would have been evidence. You see him when he runs to the curtain. There was blood all over the knife and there was white curtains. And I'm like, there would have been evidence that a dude broke in and stabbed your sister. It wasn't a ghost. And it's like, but not only that. I mean, a ghost fooled and have stabbed her. No. So you found knife boots on your sister, one on her stomach and one on her back, and you still think that a ghost killed her? And even the mm, the thing, I want the truth to be held. She already knew the truth. Yeah. She already knew her father killed her. They didn't have to find out anything because we already knew, because she already told us. So you are telling me that a child willingly and knowingly choose to, to keep doing everything she did, even after her mom showing up, told her they could be together if she just let go of her revenge, but she said no. She wanted to keep dad with her all the time. So, basically, she decided, you are telling me that at some point she decided to to doom herself to eternal damnation, to hell, just to keep faking, weeping her dad. (laughs) Rather than going and spending time with her (laughs) mum? Girl, you have a problem. Yeah. You have a huge kinky problem, and I don't want to go through <laughs> that path <laughs> because really you are very, very, very too young for yeah. me to talk about this right now. So, uh, yeah, the movie didn't make any sense. The movie was boring, was too long. He had so many plot holes that I'm not even going to go <laughs> through them all because I honestly forgot some of them. I just wonder how the the coroner, I mean, she she died in a room. Someone would have to, to ask questions, right? Yeah. So there should have been a coroner, at least, doctor. and Well, the police she... would have turned up and found the body with two stab wounds on it. Exactly. And no, gone, oh, no, no. she got stabbed. No. no, 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 absolutely. No one noticed that she got stabbed. Because Alia was still sure it was the ghost. The ghost that uh, we find at the end of the movie was trying to protect her. 
cupboards. I think I popping think... up in people's cupboards and like screaming at them doesn't yeah, really yeah. Skype. I'm a friendly ghost here to look after you. Maybe if you yeah. had just like, you know, turned up and been warning watch out for rather than like i'm under your bed ah! i'm in your oh i keep opening and closing your door ah, i'm screaming some more i'm like no no you know it's bad no. haunting bad ghosting and also you are dealing with two people who can see and talk to you yeah. so you could save them and save us two hours movie <laughs> yeah. that shouldn't have been done so yes i didn't enjoy this at all i can recognize the acting was very good the filming was good if we don't if we don't talk about the too much special effect and uh, the bad makeup yeah i mean the setting was nice and the colors color palettes were good but it was just dumb. And then I spent the whole movie trying to work out why this one was rated 18. Because for some unknown reason, it's an 18 in the UK. And, I was, and then it's just that one stupid scene. And it's like, why did we have to have a scene of someone getting their head chopped off with a chainsaw? Like, that was over the top. It wasn't needed. It was co- And it really, really stayed on it for ages. It's like, we're going to show you every second of this really slow decapitation by chainsaw. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, this is not Ash and the Evil Dead. This is like, you know, meant to be an interesting spiritual horror film about possession. And it's like, okay, everyone kept getting possessed and then running away and then getting tied up and then escaping and running away. And repossessed, and other people were possessed, and I was like, "Oh my god, just, just like deal with your issues, people." And then, yeah, I hated the ending. The fact that like this little girl was like, "No, I'm going to corrupt myself," and by the end of it, like they're calling her a demon. So the little girl's soul gets so corrupted in hell that she turns into a demon. And I'm like, I don't really think that's fair, because you know what? She didn't ask to be born. She didn't ask to be born out of, like, an affair. She didn't ask to be murdered. And she wanted revenge. And some demon in hell corrupts her soul and goes, ha, 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 I'm going to turn you into a demon. So she loses the plot. Not really the little girl's fault. And then when the people in the robes and the masks turned up, I'm like, oh, this is just getting stupid now. Especially, like, the weird mask crawly people. And then they just kind of hopped back into the hole. Woohoo! It's like, oh, my God, this is a wily Coyote moment. It was just like, woohoo! I'm, yeah, dumb. No, absolutely dumb. And I want to, to add something about the, the scene with the chainsaw. The blood was too watered down. Yeah. I don't suggest you people to watch this movie. Watch the original one. That one was worth it. This one, not so much. If Zoe doesn't have anything else to, to say? Nope. Okay. So, people, thank you for listening to us and uh, to share our pain about uh, the betrayal we endured by um, Indonesian movies. I didn't expect this to be this bad. Yeah. Actually, from the, the poster, I was expecting this one to be uh, creepier than the first one. No, no. I have, uh, I can admit, I have problems with uh, um, burns. I don't like the scars that uh, burning leaves on, on the skin. So, uh, at first I thought that the girl was burned and I was already a little bit worried about having to watch a movie with a character. No, I was wrong. It was just bad makeup. But thank you for listening and we hope we didn't scare you away. And thank you and see you next time. Bye-bye. As always, Gaia, it's a pleasure. Um, the, yeah, just don't watch this film, guys. Take it from me and Gaia. Watch the original movie. Stick to that. It's worth it. This one, just so not. So for now, bye bye. <laughs>